This is GM Word of the Week, and I'm Fiddleback. Ziggurat Blurry from the heat, you drag yourself up yet another billowy yellow-white sand dune. Wind blasts your face with coarse grit. In every direction, you see desert. If you don't find your destination soon, you might have to give up this expedition. Supplies are running low. And then you spot it. Below the dune in a great sandy depression, a massive brown structure rises. It's a three-tiered terraced structure, a flat-topped pyramid with sublevels. A massive staircase climbs up one side, flanked by statues of strange, forgotten deities. You found the lost ziggurat of Amak Kol. And as hard as it was, you reflect that this was the easiest leg of your adventure. The ancient shrine is certainly protected. Pop quiz, hotshot. Imagine a D&D adventure that takes place in a desert. What's the adventure site? If you said shoot the hostage, you're thinking of the wrong movie. This one stars Brendan Fraser, not Keanu Reeves. Because the answer is inside a pyramid. It's always inside a pyramid. Now imagine a D&D adventure that takes place in a jungle. What's the adventure site? Obviously, it's also inside a pyramid. But it isn't inside one of those weird layered pyramids. The kind that looks like it's made out of Lego or Minecraft. A stepped pyramid, right? Now, if you're a word nerd like us, you are probably shouting at your iPod or Zune or whatever it is you kids use to listen to us nowadays. You're probably saying, hey! Word of the week, guys. That's called a ziggurat. And guess what? You're wrong. The reason we put step pyramids in jungles is because the Mayans and the Aztecs filled their jungle homes with step pyramids. At least, that's what we think, right? But here's the thing. The Mayans and the Aztecs and the Olmecs didn't build ziggurats. So if you call the thing inspired by Mayan and Aztec adventure sites a ziggurat, you're wrong. Sorry. If you want to find a ziggurat, you're going to have to travel to the desert. Except, here's the crazy part. Even though we call the things Mayans and Aztecs built either steppe pyramids or Mesoamerican pyramids, they're actually much more similar to ziggurats than they are to pyramids, both in form and in function. So, in a way, if you want to insist on calling these Mesoamerican things ziggurats, you at least deserve partial credit. And if you want to get really technical, you could say that most ziggurats are stepped pyramids. And in fact, some of the earliest pyramids were also stepped pyramids. It's sort of like that logic puzzle about how all thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. So let's get architectural and disentangle the mystery of the pyramids. Stepped and otherwise. First of all, let's talk about pyramids in general. When you hear the word pyramid, you probably think of ancient Egyptian tombs. And that's fair enough. Because the Egyptians pretty much have the lock on building true pyramids. But what's interesting is that the word pyramid is a Greek word. It's not an Egyptian word. And the word pyramid actually means shaped like a pyramid. We know. We just blew your mind, didn't we? See, the Greeks were into geometry. Really into geometry. In fact, one Greek was so into geometry that he thought the whole universe was basically an imperfect reflection of a universe that was actually made out of math. That dude was Pythagoras. 
And if you saw the original 1939 Wizard of Oz film, you know one of Pythagoras' most famous rules of math. Except you know it wrong. We're referring, of course, to the scene in which the Scarecrow is awarded an honorary college degree by the Wizard of Oz and then immediately recites the sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. But the actual Pythagorean theorem says that the sum of the squares of the two legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. But that has nothing to do with pyramids. We just mention it because it has bugged us for years. The point is, a pyramid is just a shape. That's all the word means, and the shape is pretty basic. Draw a shape on the ground like a square or a triangle. Now, above it, put a single point. Connect the point to all the corners of the shape, and you've got a pyramid. That's the technical definition, more or less. Now the thing is, the pyramid is an absolutely fantastic shape, at least from an architectural perspective. If you want to build a massive structure on any surface, the pyramid is pretty much the easiest. Why? Because it's stable and it's distributed. Imagine you're some ancient person and you want to build a tall structure, but the best you can do is bake some mud into bricks or cut some limestone cubes and stack them up. How do you make something big and tall? Well, you make it in layers. And if you want it to be stable, you make it in layers where each layer is smaller than the last. So build a brick square. Then on top of that, build a slightly smaller brick square and a smaller one and on and on until you get to the top. The best part is if you're building on something like sand, the weight of the whole thing is spread out over a big, big area because the bottom covers a big area. And that's why pyramids are pretty much the first structure that just about every ancient culture on earth worked out. I kid you not, pyramids were all the rage in the ancient world. Sumerians, Mesopotamians, Egyptians, Chinese, Aztecs, Mayans, Olmecs, Indians, Indonesians, the Igbo of Nigeria, everyone who was anyone in the who's who of ancient civilizations built pyramids. There is only one continent on earth that didn't have someone stacking up bricks into pyramid shapes, and that's because penguins are terrible at basic masonry. But here's the thing. We're actually kind of generous with what we call a pyramid, because most of those structures weren't really pyramids at all. They were tapered, terraced things. And that brings us to the ziggurats. Way back in 4000 BCE, in Mesopotamia, the Ubaid people figured out the trick of building raised platforms by stacking up rectangular layers of bricks. If you aren't aware, by the way, Mesopotamia is the land between the Tigris and the Euphrates River in what is now Iraq. In fact, Mesopotamia actually comes from the same Greek word as Mesoamerica and Hippopotamus. The Meso part means middle and the Potamia part means river. Mesopotamia is in the middle of the rivers. See? Oh, by the way, it means river horse. The hippo part means horse, because we know you were wondering. Mesopotamia is important because it was a fertile floodplain. The rivers would rise, deposit all sorts of minerals, and then recede. And when they receded, they left very fertile soil behind. And that is why, in Mesopotamia, humans invented agriculture. And that is what allowed us to settle down and stop chasing herds of animals and build things. Hence, it is basically considered the birthplace of all human civilization. Though that's kind of unfair, because other wandering peoples also figured out the trick of farming in other places at other points in human history, so it's not like all civilization was invented in Mesopotamia. 
And that brings us around again to ziggurats. The word ziggurat comes from an ancient language called Akkad. It was one of the earliest Middle Eastern languages, and the word means raised land. A ziggurat was basically a big old platform, usually with one or two terraces and stairs connecting them together, and a flat place on top. But the thing is, ziggurats really didn't look much like pyramids at all. They looked like big, blocky, tapered things with a terrace or two and stairs climbing to the top. Which brings us to the Ur example of ziggurats. Now, Ur example is a term that you may or may not have heard bandied about. It's a colloquialism that means the oldest example. When you say the Ur example, you're just saying, and this is the first recorded instance of the thing. Ironically, the Ur example of ziggurats is the great ziggurat of Ur. And you might think, I guess since we're talking about the first major architectural marvel built by one of the first civilizations ever, that's why the term Ur example exists. But if that were true, dear word nerds, we'd just have used the Alanis Morissette version of irony. And we're better than that. Remember, irony is when something turns out to be different than what you would expect. And in this case, you'd expect that the origin of the term Ur example is the same as the origin of the name of the great ziggurat of Ur, and you'd be wrong. The Ur in Ur example is a German prefix that means oldest. The Ur in the great ziggurat of Ur came from the king Ur Namu, who had the ziggurat built in the kingdom he named after himself, Ur. It's just one of those funny word coincidences. Anyway, the great ziggurat of Ur is basically a three-layered structure with a little terrace built on the front, and it actually looks more like a trapezoid than a pyramid. And it has been extensively explored and excavated. It was first described by explorer William Kennett Loftus in the early 1800s, and it was excavated about 50 years later by the explorer John George Taylor. But the most extensive exploration of the site came in the 1920s by Sir Leonard Woolley of the British Museum. Now, what's very interesting about the Mesopotamian and Sumerian ziggurats is that we're not entirely sure what they were for. Except we kind of are. It's just more complicated than you think. See, Greek writers insisted that every one of the ziggurats of the Middle East had a shrine to the gods on top of it. And so, you might think, okay, they serve a religious purpose. But actually, we've never found any solid proof of what was in the top structure of those things. They just didn't survive through the years. So we're making some assumptions. And the truth of the matter is that, while they probably did have shrines and temples, there was a lot more to it than that. See, there were a lot of practical reasons to build a giant raised flat-topped structure. It made a really good place to gather people. A nice, stable place. And it was easy to defend because you had to go up a bunch of stairs to access it, and people could see you coming and stop you. And, because they were so tall and so stable, they probably survived floods. And if you've been paying attention, you probably remember that I already said something about floods. That's right. Mesopotamia is a floodplain. It periodically had floods, and you can ride out a flood by standing on top of a massive, stable structure. Especially one where you could gather a lot of people. The truth is that the ziggurat was more than just a place to put a shrine. It was a gathering place. It was a central location. It was a place of protection, worship, and celebration. It was the center of ancient life. And that is why it had the terraces. The terraces added lots of usable space to the ziggurat. And that is why the Mesoamerican pyramids are more like ziggurats than pyramids. See, the ancient Egyptians built true pyramids. You've seen them. 
They aren't terraced, tiered structures around which to center life. They are actually giant mountains to mark the places where you put your dead. Yes, that is a spiritual use. But it's the only use. The Egyptian pyramids, such as the Great Pyramids of Giza, as impressive as they are as structures, were basically just glorified grave markers. The ziggurats of Sumeria and Babylon and the Mesoamerican pyramids of Tikal and El Castillo and Tenochtitlan were more complicated. They were religious structures, but they were also the centers of cultural life. Of course, cultural life and religious life for ancient peoples were often very closely related. So, how can you use all of this in your games? Well, there's a couple of important points. First of all, there's the idea that most architecture is sort of variations on a theme. And if you run the sort of game that is filled with ancient empires, you might start to think about how ancient elves and ancient dwarves and ancient hobgoblins and ancient humans put their own spin on the same basic architectural principles. But there's another lesson too. One about adventure sites. Often, when we design adventures in RPGs, we create sites of adventure based around very simple ideas. This was a tomb, we say, and this was a shrine. And we give it no more thought than that. But, as the great ziggurat of Ur demonstrates, this is a gross oversimplification. These structures were massive undertakings, and they had to be functionally useful, not just for one purpose like dead people or temple, but for lots of purposes like celebrations, rituals, protection from floods, religious rites, and showing off just how awesome your king or queen was. This has been the GM Word of the Week. It was written by the Angry GM and recorded and produced by me, Fiddleback. You can find more at theangrygm.com and madadventurers.com.